This week's Sedra is really an exciting one. It's sort of like a roller coaster. Kitetse takes you on a ride. There's so many mitzvot that as soon as you feel you have the grasp on one of them, all of a sudden you go free falling down with another mitzvah. Then, as soon as you understand that one, you go up and you're brought down again with another idea that must be discovered. It's really an amazing sedra, and I can't think of anything better this week than to open up your chumash and review the sedra. As we look at the sedra, where we open it up and we find the mitzvah that's a little puzzling called Esha Yifat Torah. A soldier, we're told, as the Jewish army invades another country or another country comes to attack us, we find that the women, our rabbis tell us, of the invading enemies or the enemies that we're invading used to adorn themselves in order to seduce the Jewish soldiers and entrap them for the enemy to come and take them. That was the mindset of the, of the, of the women that we used to attack, the nation's women that we used to attack. What's troubling is that the Jewish soldier coming in is then allowed to have relations with this woman. According to the Torah, the Torah recognizing the challenge facing the Jewish man realizes that once he's challenged with this woman, is not going to be able to hold back. And therefore, the Torah allows under very definitive restrictions, ones which are too detailed to go into now, but under restrictions is allowed to have this woman. The explanation given is that the man's Yitzhahara, his desire, is too strong for him to deny at that point. Now, whether or not you'll accept the theory that the Torah addresses one's Yitzhahara and gives into it, that's a different question, not for now. What I find troubling is this notion that the Jewish soldier, as soon as he attacks, turns into this instinctual animal who can't withhold his, his lustful desires and must have this woman to the point where the Torah recognizing an impossible situation has to give it. And I'll tell you why I'm so troubled with that image of the soldier. Last week, Sedra explained to us the speech that the soldiers get right before they enter into battle. And it's told that it is a, prohib a prohibition, one of the 613 mitzvahs, not to have fear, to be completely confident, to have faith in Hashem as you go into battle. In fact, one that feels scared and one that's troubled by the notion of going into battle is excused from fighting. A soldier that strong, a soldier with that much faith and that much confidence and is able to set aside his fears, one of the greatest instincts that man is faced with, is then, we're told, not able to control his lust. How do we reconcile this image of the soldier, complete in his faith, able to set aside his fear, completely brave, entering into battle, but completely at the whims of his instinctual desires when it comes to, the, to lust? That is what troubles me. And the answer I think we can understand. A soldier about to enter battle is told, no fear. You're not allowed to be scared. You have to go in with complete confidence. That soldier works hard. That's not natural to come by. That amount of faith is difficult for him to follow through on. And when he's spending so much time on his faith and so much time on that bravery, his other flaws are able to rise up and overtake it. One of those flaws which he, which he always works on is his flaw, his instinctual desire for the sexual. That, while normally he's working on that, he's able to control it. In this situation, because he's spending so much of his efforts and energies on fear, everything else is able to come and overtake him. And that is the challenge that the Torah had to deal with, and it did so through the Eishat Yifat Torah. This challenge that we have, that we find in the Jewish soldier, is not limited to the Jewish soldier, but it extends to all of us. Rosh Hashanah is right around the corner. Each and every one of us should be and will be taking it upon ourselves to, to perfect ourselves, to improve ourselves. We have to be careful, and we have to see the warning that this week's Sedra presents. We have to ensure that when we're faced with one challenge and we try very hard to work on that one area, we don't allow the other areas, things that we've already worked on, things we've already perfected and improved ourselves on, we have to make sure that those areas don't come and overtake us. Shabbat Shalom.